Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. You've already seen the title of this video. You might be wondering why I'm not in front of the King bookshelves. That's because I do not believe that King had any part in this. Um, not that that affected it, affected my rating whatsoever. Um, but today we are talking about Sleeping Beauties, the graphic novel. These were released as individual comics and I bought the uh, the bind up uh, graphic novel with the first five uh, first five not episodes first five issues um, in one package. Um, I need to preface this review because I know that uh, one of the authors of this adaptation, uh, Rio Ewers, um, sometimes watches my videos, especially when I talk about his books. Um, Rio, if you are watching, I probably would click away. Um, you you tried. That's all. That's all I really want to say to you. This has this is no detriment to you because I still did not like this book, this story, even with your talent involved. Um, I have nothing but the highest respect for you, and I'm just going to jump into the review. Um, I have the same problem with the graphic novel as I did the novel itself, the novel it's based on, which is Sleeping Beauties, um, by Stephen King and Owen King. Um, there's, I said something, the reason why I'm doing this review specifically, specifically, is because in my review of Sleeping Beauties, I said, I mentioned how it was supposed to be a TV show, how it was, uh, uh, kind of started that way, and it became a novel instead, um, and I said that it might be a better visual story than it is a written story, a story in narrative. I was wrong. Um, and I want to make that clear right up front that I was completely wrong. Um, the things that I did not like about the narrative are the same things that I do not like about this book. Um, and that's like, it's the rehash of Under the Dome. It's the no unique characters. We've seen all these characters before. Um, King and Owen, uh, Stephen and Owen did absolutely nothing new. Um, with characters that King has been writing about his entire career. Um, I usually don't have that problem with Stephen King. I also find Owen King to be a fantastic writer. I absolutely love Double Feature. Gave it five stars. I, I adored it. Um, I still haven't gotten to his uh, novella short story collection. I plan to uh, in November, actually. Uh, and I have I really do not think that I will dislike it um, because I, usually, I tend to love it when he's in his wheelhouse. Uh, he's more of a literary writer. Uh, he doesn't tackle horror all that often. Um, and there was something lacking from 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 this. I don't know if because he was outside of his wheelhouse, but I didn't even think the writing was up to snuff for his, for Double Feature. Double Feature was so good, I put it up there with, with books like Infinite Jest as far as the writing is concerned. Fantastic book. A Double Feature, by the way. I still think about the 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 you know the the film in in the story I still think about things like that just same way I, I, I always think about infinite jest anytime I think about uh, what is it not cult classics but you know movies that are kind of off the grid the movies that nobody's watched you know there's a little bit of mystery behind it all that stuff in fact I plan to reread double feature eventually I'm saying all of that to say again this does not work for me um, the artwork I especially did not like the artwork. Uh, I don't know what it is about American comic books. Um, they are super inconsistent um, sometimes. In, in this one, I know it's probably like an art style thing, but I don't vibe with it. Sometimes the art isn't, this is very, very childish. I mean, it's not colored in the lines. <laughs> you know, it bleeds outward. And I know it's probably on purpose, but there's there are times when you see a very striking image well done, but it's just so few and far between. The only thing I liked about this was the representation of Evie. Um, but once again, I am reminded of how much this is like Storm of the Century, how much it's like Under the Dome. There are just so many king things here. And like Gwendy's Magic Feather, it felt like Stephen King fan fiction. There's really nothing you can do about that. Um, but I thought maybe in a visual medium, whether it be graphic novel or an eventual TV show or movie or whatever, I thought maybe that would fix the problems that I had with the narrative. Me, it didn't. Um, 
I, the the biggest gripe I have was with the very first issue. Um, I started disliking it right away because of the way it jumped around. Um, in the in the novel, it jumps around kind of the same way. I don't remember it being as chaotic. You'd have in the in this graphic novel, you'd have one page from one character, and then jump over to an entirely new character on another page, and then another page would be an entirely new character, and it just bounced around. And I honestly, I was confused, and I had read and remembered the book. I've read Sleeping Beauties twice, once once the text, and one time listening to the audiobook. Um, it, but I do that with all of Stephen King's books, no matter how much I, I love or hate them. Um, I always give them multiple chances. Uh, I need to go ahead and give the novel another chance, but I'll probably wait a couple years because... I already I'm I know I'm dreading it just mentioning you know giving it a third try because I give Kings all of I've given all of King stuff three tries. Um, one one more thing and I pe people say sometimes I harp on things and I do but I truly respect Rio Ewers but I don't think anything could have saved this story. Um, it, it just it just does not gel well with me because of the re... I, I think my biggest complaint is how reused it is. And if I'm going to be honest and I'm going to say I can't stand Dean Koontz for doing this same thing, I, I can't give Stephen King, or Owen King for that matter, a pass. Um, there are some things in here that I do not remember from the book, and I don't know if that's my memory or if that's additional content added in. I think so because some of the protesting things I believe were, you know, were inspired by actual events that happened after the book was released. I could be wrong. I probably am um, because I've, I've tried to block out as much as possible about the book. Anyways, so again, the reason I'm here is because I wanted to correct myself. It was not better in a visual medium. Um, and while I respect all three authors, and let me go ahead and mention before I leave out of here, Allison Sampson and Triana Farrell, um, their roles, I believe they might have been writers. I don't know. Um, I'm not familiar with their work, unfortunately, uh, but those are the issues that I had, um, and I appreciate the effort that was involved in creating this. It's just not for me. But if you tried the graphic novels or the comic books, oh, by the way, I won't be continuing on with this, so you don't have to worry about any more negative reviews about this series. Uh, have you read the graphic novel of Sleeping Beauties? If you have, Please let me know down there in the doobly-doo whether or not you loved it, whether or not you hated it, whether or not you felt meh about it, any of those things. But tell me why you felt that way in detail so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!